I, like my colleagues, would like to join my contribution to this 2022 debate. Firstly, sir, let me congratulate the Right Honorable Senior Minister of Finance, Dr. Ashley Kumar Singh, for his eloquent presentation. Sir, I would also like to acknowledge the sterling contribution of the staff of the Ministry of Finance and other line ministries without whom the timely presentation of this budget would not have been possible. Mr. Speaker, we just heard the Honorable Member Mr. Sears. First of all, we keep saying they don't read. And obviously, sir, we heard the Honorable Member lamenting that they were not being given opportunities in tourism and in scholarships. And the Honorable Minister of Tourism sat here and she said, it's in the newspapers, their advertisements. Have you ever applied? Sir, I would like to encourage my friends on the opposite side once again to please pay attention. Everything is in the open. We're not hiding anything. All of our citizens are free to participate and enjoy all of the goodies that this government has to offer and has been offering from the time it took office. Sir, the honorable member said, he also said, when they get back into power, I don't know when that is going to be, but sir, that he, they're going to remove the VAT from electricity. I'm wondering if he's aware who put VAT on electricity in 2015. It was the PPPC who removed the VAT from electricity when we got back into power. The other thing I need to tell, he's probably too young to know this, Mr. Speaker. When he spoke about person's ribs are some are eating and others ribs are showing mr speaker that is something of the past i i was looking around to see if any of my old oh, doctor uh, dr Prasad may not even remember that there was a time sir in this country when we had a special area for some children we deemed malnutrition malnourished they had a special place for them. And so, you know what? That was under AP, the PNC regime. That war, that institution was abolished when the PPP took office in 1992, sir, and remained being abolished. So, so Mr. Sears, I... I don't know if you know of any pockets where we have such children i would encourage you to please bring it to the attention of the ministry of health so that we can rectify it because we have the capabilities of doing so mr speaker this budget is predicated upon an understanding of the needs of the citizens of this country young and old, Mr. Sears. It is tempered with the realities of our actual financial situation. Against this backdrop, we seek to overlay a new code of conduct to be adopted by the current implementers based on the general principles of selflessness, objectivity, accountability, openness, and leadership. Leadership, Mr. Speaker, a word that is missing from the vocabulary of our friends on the opposite side. These values, Mr. Speaker, will form a thread 
that pervades all of our endeavors throughout this year and indeed for the duration of our unending term in office. Mr. Speaker, several members on the opposite side of this house said that this budget has nothing for the poor and vulnerable. This, sir, is a blatant distortion of the truth. Mr. Speaker, any rightfully thinking person, even one with minimal comprehensive capabilities, can understand the benefits to be gained, not only by the poor and the vulnerable, but by every single citizen of this country. Mr. Speaker, all of our citizens throughout the length and breadth of this land, even Mr. Sears, those who work at Freedom House and incidentally at Congress Place, and even you, the honorable members on the opposite side of this house, will derive enormous benefits from the 300 million allocated for small businesses. Yes, thank you, honorable member. The 1.3 billion allocated for the development in ICT, the 245 million allocated for the establishment of new industrial estates. And sir, that's where we have jobs for those who are qualified, not as you write, as you said, honorable member, giving persons jobs that we want to give them, not what they want. We are also qualifying those persons to occupy those jobs that will be created. Also, sir, there is going to be $600 million for power generation in Region 9, $170 million in Region 8, and $1.1 billion for solar farms in our hinterland. Mr. Speaker, GPL will be given a further $1.6 billion to improve its transmission capabilities. So the, I, I would like to assure the honorable member who spoke about blockouts, blockouts, and more blockouts that maybe, maybe there's an issue with paying your, your light bills or, or your lines, your transmission lines. And that will soon be looked after. Mr. Speaker, 27, point, 27 billion will also be allocated to roads and bridges. And incidentally, sir, this amount will be expended on actual works on roads and bridges, not on feasibility studies, as we saw under the Apple AFC regime. Mr. Speaker, there will also be 600 million for hinterland airstrip upgrades. As you can see, sir, every single person within this country in every area will be benefiting under this budget. Sir, our river and sea defenses, we have been having lots of floods recently. That is going to be rectified it will not be rectified totally because we have to remember we live below the sea level and sir i am a little later i'm going to speak of what development really is and we have to do things one day at a time and it just can't happen now as my honorable colleague on the other side, Ms. Nazir, the honorable member, wanted everything to happen now. It will not be happening now, but it will happen in time. We are setting the ground, the floor. We are setting the baseline for these things to happen, sir. And it is going to be resolved. Mr. Speaker, all of these massive allocations 
which allocate to trillions in the health sector and the education sector. And we'll hear a lot about the education sector when my honorable colleague, Minister of Education comes here and when the Honorable Minister of Health comes to make his presentation. Mr. Speaker, sometimes I wonder, are these people for real? Mr. Speaker, the oppositions who are calling for the increase of the tax threshold, increase in old age pension, and for the UG tuition to be free are the very people who sat quietly under the APNU reign when water and electricity subsidies were taken away from our pensioners, when the one month tax free bonus was taken away from the hard working men and women of our discipline services. Mr. Speaker, when the tuition fees of the very University of Guyana that they're asking for it to be free, when that tuition was doubled. Who was it doubled by, sir? The very regime, the persons who sit on the opposite side today and spruing what should happen. Where were they? Why weren't they advising their own administration? Mr. Speaker, additionally, over 200 new burdensome taxes were imposed on items that are essential for the well-being of the very poor and vulnerable that they are suddenly so caring for. Mr. Speaker, even the milk and cereals for the poor orphan babies were taxed. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, yes, the other, even the donkey cart man had to pay taxes. Yes, everything was taxed, sir. Everything was taxed. And I, I would like to, I would, I, I would have liked to repeat something that I was told by a citizen, but because of the rules of this Hollywood House, I will not do so. Mr. Speaker, our friends on the other side of this house came here with their crooked and cooked up stories in the most self-righteous and hubristic manner, hoping that the people of this country really have a short memory or that they are suffering from total amnesia. But I call it an insult to our intelligence. What deceit. It is a fact, Mr. Speaker, that some deceivers are so expert that they deceive even themselves. And this statement aptly describes my colleagues on the opposite side of this house. Mr. Speaker, all of the budgets, including this one presented by the PPPC government, are always methodical and heralded clear economic pathways to development. Sir, this government is and has always been committed to the development of our people and country. Mr. Speaker, development is achieved through properly planned and implemented processes and not by whimsical ideas. Sir, every citizen will remember the popular catchphrases of the APNU government. And these were, sir, the good life and the green economy. Mr. Speaker, that good life was only realized by a privileged few who were obviously cabinet members. And the touted green economy was exhibited 
by the painting of all government buildings in the color green. Mr. Speaker, what moral authority does anyone on the opposition benches has to criticize this expertly crafted 2022 PPPC budget when all of the budgets presented by APNU were loaded with promises devoid of any ideas and plans for diversification of the economy, no creativity and no vision, or definitely no plan for sustainable development. Honorable member, you will need five minutes to continue and conclude. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to ask the honorable member be given five minutes to conclude her presentation. Thank you, honorable member. You may proceed. Mr. Speaker, the former APNU government stands accused and guilty of systematically dismantling all working and progressive reforms that were so carefully instituted by successive PPPC governments. And Mr. Speaker, this was done for no other reason than for political spite and vindictiveness. Sir, the Honorable Opposition Chief Whip, Mr. Jones said when he was reminding this House about the existence of Article 13 of the Constitution. Yes, Honorable Opposition Chief Whip, please note that Article 13 did not fall out of the sky into the Constitution. Today, or in 2020, it was there since 1980. Mr. Speaker, five years ago, when the APNU was in government, they told us, that is why we are here and you are there. It was not arrogance and breach of Article 13 then, but, sir, it is arrogance and breach of Article 13 today. They told us they do not need to consult the opposition because they have 34 seats. And we have 33 seats. Yes, sir, we remember those things. Mr. Speaker, even on that fateful day, when the no confidence motion was passed against the AP, PNU government, no less a person than the government chief whip said to us, APNU is in the government and will be here for the next 40 years. We will have no discussions with you. You have 33 seats and we have 34. Bring it on. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, it was not arrogance then. But, according to Mr. Jones, it is arrogance now. But, sir, I sat there, and for all of them who want to play they do not remember, I remember, Mr. Speaker. And the people of Guyana remembers. And as long as they remember, that is all that matters to us. Mr. Speaker, the Minister of Finance had no objections to having discussions with the APNU during his budget presentation. But, sir, they are the ones who have to make themselves available for those discussions. Yes, 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 yes. Mr. Speaker, you know, they keep saying that the PPPC, whenever the PPPC is in government, crime increases. That's one of their mantras. But have they ever noticed? that when they are in opposition, crime increases? Yes, honorable members. When you are in opposition, crime increases. And that is very significant. And Mr. Speaker, there is a new phenomenon. Fires in public buildings have now been added to the crime list. Mr. Speaker, 
Mr. Speaker, the Honorable Member, Mr. Figueroa said when he spoke, you can fool some of the people some of the time, but you cannot fool all of the people all of the time. And Mr. Speaker, I think they should read that for themselves. Mr. Speaker, once again, let me congratulate the Minister of Finance on this 2022 budget, a budget which definitely will instill and restore national confidence, pride, integrity, accountability, economic stability, and rebuild the trust of the people in government while developing our willingness so that we will do the work together. Mr. Speaker, restoring Guyana back to its pre-2015 glory is paramount and will require the collective effort of every citizen with the full engagement of those on the other side. I make a call, sir, for all to rally around our program, a program of development, a program of vision, which have policies and clear directions for the development of this dear land of ours. Let us do this together. I implore upon you. Thank you.